Okay, thanks everybody. This is all great to see you all here. Um, hello, could you please mute yourself if you're joining? Sorry, you're just joined on time. I'm just starting. Um, perfect. Um, yes, so if everybody could have themselves muted, um, I'll explain who I am in a minute. Um, I'm basically here to help uh, figure out what, what is OpenSUSE going to do about SUSE Alp. Um, so the agenda for today's meeting starts with, you know, what, why is SUSE doing SUSE Alp? Like what, what is the, yeah, you know, what is the company thinking? Where, where the heck are we going in this direction? What is it? What exactly SUSE will be building and when? Um, which is one of the reasons why this meeting took so long because the the when needed some discussions um, and I couldn't talk about any of this stuff until after Sousa gone um, and then you know not quite as optimistic as I think Lubosch was trying to make it sound um, be sharing all the the problems I see going forward all the all the things I think this group need will need to address uh, and my presentation is not moving forward one minute there we go so for those who don't uh yeah who don't know me i'm richard i've been around open since like time began um but i'm here to with you today like actually kind of not with my open hat off because that's impossible but um i'm here very much as my new role at SUSE, as their distribution architect um, you know i've been building distributions in SUSE and open now for way too long you know i was involved when we did evergreen and open SUSE. i i was yeah the guy who introduced leap to the world you know cubic micro os tumbleweed today was you know merged because yeah me and a few others wanted to merge it and of course i started the micro os desktop now known as eon and yeah now i'm working for SUSE as a distribution architect and you know SUSE is doing this alp thing it has a whole bunch of impacts on open SUSE, and so I'm here to help with that, but I'm not here to um, solve any of those problems. You know, I'm here to share with you the information, figure, you know, hopefully get the community together to get started. But really, you know, unfortunately, as I'll exp as you hopefully will see through this, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I will be busy with, and there's going to be a whole bunch more room for you guys to do basically most of the work for what we're talking about here. Um, you know, the yeah, there's plenty of work to go around for everybody. Um, but this isn't so this isn't like with, you know, Aeon where, you know, I'm building everything and I'm trying to get volunteers to help. Um, you know, you volunteer to deal with this problem. I'm just one data source for you guys to have to try as you try and fix all of this stuff. The good news with that means is you can also disagree with everything that I am saying and go your own direction if you want. So that's fun. Um, a few disclaimers. Um, I didn't get my managers to check any of this before I shared it with you all. <laughs> so, you know, everything is subject to change. Um, Alp is, is a constantly moving target anyway. Um, any code name in here might change. Any product name in here might change. Any time probably, you know, will change in some way or form. Um, yeah, and yeah, things I shared with you might be actually more than internal people would have wanted but i'm begging for forgiveness rather than permission because yeah there's a there's a lot to share and uh yeah if you don't have the full picture then how are you meant to get your work done right so the big picture why is SUSE doing this whole new thing first and foremost like as wonderful as Slee is, as commercially successful as Slee is, you know, Slee has like some pretty major problems. And this kind of gets wrapped up at SUSE and, and described lately as the Slee trap. At its heart, it's, you know, Slee has a lifespan of 10 to 13 years, depending on your point of view, you know, like uh, a little bit less for the desktops, but, you know, 10 years for the basic products, 13 for LTSS. Um, uh, and, and when I say like a product, I mean like the the major release. So, you know, SLEE 15, 13 years lifespan. And once you've started something like a SLEE 15, whatever was there on day one of SLEE 15 GA is expected to remain there and supported for the lifespan of the product. Um, you know, so, you know, I'm going to be picking on Python a lot here, um, not because 
it's particularly worse than anything but like every example i have ends up always coming back to python so it's just like the perfect universal example you know whatever python version was there at sleep 15 has to be there forever hi neil i could also pick on ruby too um yeah so we've yeah we've got this we've got that thing in there forever as it gets older it is harder to maintain um as we know from tumbleweed right like version bumps are far easier than backporting narrow fixes you know backporting is complicated maintaining backports is complicated and so you know the product gets bigger and bigger and bigger because i mean naturally that kind of happens with any product right you hit, make it hit the real world and customers want more stuff but then you that gets kind of amplified by the fact that not only is it getting bigger and bigger but you're supporting every previous version of everything that you've ever put in that code stream for 10 to 13 years um to be kind of honest about it like you know no matter how wonderful slee growth is and stuff like it's almost like practically impossible at this point for like SUSE engineering to actually grow at the same pace as the work required like we keep on having to do everything smarter harder faster um and and some of this is just because of the design of SLEE. So let's change the design of SLEE or let's do something different from SLEE. So, oh, I forgot about this slide. So to kind of like highlight that at its extreme, um, SLEE 15 GA started with about 3,000 and uh, 3,366 source packages. Um, now, here we are a couple of years later, really not that long ago, five, five years. You know, the amount of source packages in OBS for Sleep 15 SB5 is 33,000. That's, you know, every maintenance update, every version and everything. It's insane. Yes, um, sorry, Neil, if you could mute yourself. Questions at the end because you missed the beginning. But yeah, it's double tumbleweed. It's insane. And this is all because of the nesting of how we built SLEE. But we nest everything because of that like sleep trap promise of like everything that we said worked at the beginning should work forever and so you know the complexity of building a product like that is monumental i mean not only like once it's out there out the door but also just like getting the thing built in the first place like i mean i mean like <laughs> like neil just said it's double tumbleweed right that also means when we're building a sleep service pack not only do we have to worry about the 700 or so submissions that are actually going into that SLEE service pack, but all the other submissions that are going into all the other update channels of all the other service packs, which all can possibly change the code base at that time. Like during development of a SLEE service pack, tumbleweed is almost easier. Like there's less rate of churn in tumbleweed <laughs> because we know tumbleweed it comes in one pipeline it comes through one staging we can control the whole thing yeah slee is is really quite unwieldy in that respect um but we do it because of the the sleep at the that sleep trap promise so goal number one of alp bring an end to that you know stop the sleep trap and basically design an operating system that's you know, still great for the enterprise but during the life cycle of of yeah, an ALP product, and I'll explain what I mean by an ALP product later, you know, we should be able to drop or replace software stacks during the life cycle of the thing. Topic number two, why SUSE is doing all of this. SUSE's customers are moving faster. Um, this is actually like a, a quote from more than one PM inside SUSE. Um, and and it, it's, it's actually a universal truth. Like every customer SUSE has right now wants a totally frozen, perfectly stable, never changing system. Apart from that one thing, which they want the absolute latest of, and they're willing to pay all their money for that. <laughs> and that's what they're going to put their entire business on. Um, I, I was just at SUSECon last week. Um, it, there was customer demands for, like, they want to be patching hourly for this one thing that's moving at a way faster pace. Like, that's the way the world has moved. The, the you know, there's still a requirement for stability there. You know, it's, it's still, you know, there's still talk about, like, a stable base. But, you know, when it comes to how the industry works, how people actually make money off technology, right? You know, being first is a heck of an advantage. Um, I'll tell you privately, Neil. Um, 
you know, so, you know, Sousa's had a very clear amount of feedback of customers of like, okay, you know, we love Slee, it's wonderfully stable, but how can we get this bit faster? Or how can we get that bit faster? And how can we get that bit faster? And the funny thing, of course, if you sort of take all those different one things from all of Sousa's many different customers, you probably end up with everything moving faster. Um, and yeah, that, that becomes a little bit of a paradox. Alp is sort of trying to address part of that paradox. Before Alp, though, we've had, of course, Slee Micro. Um, and Slee Micro, you know, has been sort of the first thing walking in this path, you know, looking down the road of, okay, what if we make the, ba this, the base OS way simpler, you know, instead of 3,000 packages under 1,000 on offer? You know, what if you make the release cadence twice as crazy as Slee, you know, two versions a year? You know, what if you make the lifespan, like, half of Slee? So, you know, really, like, you know, throwing all the rules book out of Slee and doing everything, yeah, a third as small, twice as fast, half as long, breaking all the promises of what you'd expect out of an enterprise distro, um, you know, going even further and saying, you know, everything should either be containerized or, you know, if you're deploying just that one normally faster moving thing on top of it, you know, that's all you're meant to do it for. You know, it's a single purpose operating system. And the end result has been Slee Micro has become the fastest moving SUSE product, fastest growing SUSE product of all time. Like customers love it. It's great. And so Alp's second goal as a project, as a concept, is really sort of expanding on the success of Slee Micro, making yeah, products like that and you know, concepts like that more digestible to more customers in more markets, like for example, the data center. Slee Micro right now pretty much like lives on the edge with all these funky small devices in weird and wonderful places um you know so bringing extra and more to yeah that so basically growing on the success that it's made there and third and finally like <laughs> you know one of Sousa's biggest cash cows is sleep for sap you know rather unrelevant to open Sousa, but you know i'm here to explain why the business is going in this direction right so, you know, it's a hyper-focused variant of SLE just for SAP workloads. It's built with SAP, you know, shared labs, shared engineers. It's got a huge percentage of the SAP market share. You know, it, it's, yeah, big money, lots of, yeah, lots of interest. And really for, for ALP, you know, if, if we, you know, one of the problems with SLEE for SAP is, you know, that, that has been a whole lot of effort because SLE wasn't designed to make that kind of thing. So Alp is, you know, definitely going to have a goal of making it easier to make more SLE for SAP like products, you know, more narrowly focused products based on the Alp code streams for, you know, particular use cases. So obviously SAP is an example, but like, you know, automotive, aerospace, well, whatever. Whenever there's a specialist area that needs a specialist product, you know, Alp should be able to churn those specialist options out way easier than the SLE way of doing things. So that's the goal. That's what we're doing. That's why we're doing it. Um, that's why, not what we're doing. What we're doing is what I'm going to talk about now. What is Alp actually? It is not a product. It's not a single distribution. Um, you know, we're using this word platform because it is actually the, the best way of describing it. It's not even a single code base, um, as I'll explain in a minute. You know, the whole idea of, of the adaptable Linux platform is SUSE is going to have this one concept for from which pretty much every Linux product we make from now on is going to be built from. That can, you know, will be the case regardless of, of how different the products are from each other. You know, some will be bigger, some will be smaller. Some will be aiming for way bigger markets. Some will be very narrowly focused, like the SAP or automotive ones. You know, different use cases, different lifespans, possibly even like with these things varying, even when they're sharing the same code. Because you know, requirements are different in those cases. You know, something that is really hard for us to support in one market might be really easy for us to support in another. You know, Alp needs to be able to be adaptable for us in all those ways too. Um, and yeah, you know, so it's not just adaptable from the customer's point of view of, you know, 
customers should be able to mix and match some of these parts in some of these cases. It's also really adaptable for us, so we can change what SUSE offers as things develop, as the markets change, as customers change, etc. Uh, yeah, in terms of yeah, if sort of philosophy, you know how we will be building stuff behind this, yeah, behind the scenes. Alp will contain one or more code streams for lack of a better word, code bases, you know. So in Slee, you know, each Slee family had one code stream, right? You know, there was Slee 15, everything was built from that. With Alp, we're starting with one, I'll talk about that in a bit, but the concept has flexibility for as many of them as we ever want to build. Each product will be then built from one of those code streams or at least one of those code streams and it doesn't necessarily have to be a one-to-one -one relationship you know potentially i can see us building a product which will draw some packages from one code stream some packages from a different code stream um yes someone just put in the chat said does this mean uh, depending on the product a package could have different compilation options absolutely you know that's one thing we will be doing in obs is you know different things like different project configs for each product. So yeah, you know, that kind of thing can happen for sure. Um, and, you know, in terms of the products where containerization is a core factor. So things like the micros, Sli micro, Alp micro, micro OS, et cetera. You know, I can really see SUSE offering like, a, a, you know, interesting collections of, of like mix and match offerings. You know, you want a fast bunch of containers on a slow base system, have at it. You want to have a slow base system, uh, yeah, fast base system and slow containers, whatever. Um, we will also be talking about products that, you know, don't necessarily ha use that containerization in the same way or as heavily. In those cases, you know, those options might be somewhat more limited. Um, but it's important to know, like, behind the scenes, you know, this is what we're doing, how we're doing it, how it's structured, um, because from how customers will be seeing it on, on from, yeah, you know, and how parts of OBS will be showing it too, you know, different Alp products will have their own names with their own lifespan, which, which may or may not be obviously linked to the code streams that come on. Um, to kind of give you like a real world example, right? Uh, we already have, because we, you know, already walked some of this path with things like Slee Micro. You know, Slee Micro releasing twice as often as Slee, which it's based on, means it had to come up with a completely different version numbering scheme. You know, we've had 5.3 and 5.4, both based on the same Slee service pack. So there's no like relationship between the Slee service pack it's based on and what the product's called. That kind of thing is going to be happening more often where, you know, the product goes to the market with the name that makes sense for the market and the version numbers that make sense for the market and what is actually happening behind the scenes in the technology can be totally decoupled when it makes sense to do so. So the first Alp code stream has the wonderful OBS project name of SUSE Alp Source Standard, which for the purpose of this presentation, I am just going to shorten to Alp Standard from now on because I don't want to lose my voice by the end of the presentation. Um, Alp Standard is designed to be very similar to SLEE or SLEE Micro, you know, in, in terms of its concept you know it's a regular release code stream um you know it's gonna have versions the first version is 1.0 um it's gonna have an update cadence similar to slee and slee micro um it's gonna have a product lifespan similar to slee and slee micro um with of course the main overarching caveat you know, it must be possible to drop stuff between versions of alp standards so you know alp standard 1.0 will be followed up by something, a 1.1 or 1.2 or 2, I don't know. I um, haven't quite, we haven't quite narrowed down that version numbering yet because it doesn't really link to the products yet. So yeah, more discussions to be had. Um, but you know, packet, you know, unlike Slee where everything is nested, Alp standard won't be, so we can drop stuff between it. And so when people talk about, you know, the Alp code base right now, you know, they can talk about it singularly because this is the only one that exists but it probably will not be the only one that exists forever. Um, Alp Premium is, you know, 
definitely a possibility. That will probably be how we would implement concepts like long-term support, containers, products, you know, in this concept, you know, have it as a separate code stream, support it differently, build the products from there, etc. And, you know, my, my, my favorite things, rolling releases, you know, Alp rolling totally fits into this concept too. Having a code stream for faster moving products, faster moving containers, that kind of thing. Um, the, the internal documents where we were talking about this, you know, made it really kind of obvious, you know, the community's going to want this because we know, you know, OpenSUSE has a lot of interest in open in rolling releases. And in fact, it's my plan. Um, I'm going on vacation in the next three weeks, but once I'm back, um, to start converting OpenSUSE factory to basically become out rolling, um, and kind of be the implementation that, that proves a lot of what we're already doing with Alp as well. So, you know, still producing Tumbleweed the way we know it, still producing Micros the way we know it, but having the build structure the same way that SUSE will be using for the other SUSE Alp products. So App Store standards today has been, you know, under development for well over a year now, actually. Um, all the prototypes that you've seen have been built from some variant of, of that code stream. Um, everything was originally sourced from factory. And it's about, yeah, 2,600 packages, which is about 78% the size of Flea 15. It's 7% the size of Flea 15 today, but that's a really unfair comparison. Like, yeah, because, you know, all that nesting doesn't really map to <laughs> yet how that's going to work now. Um, but for reasons you'll see later when I'm talking about the planned schedule for a lot of the out products, I do not see outsource standard really growing much larger than that in the next 12 months like it's there the prototypes are done we know what we're building next and i don't really see it growing much bigger than that anytime soon obviously it's going to be updated and maintained that's the whole point but yeah in terms of what's it going to offer that's about it for now so what is susa actually building now and in the immediate future based on SUSE app standard. We have the following family of products planned for SUSE's near term future. Um, we all have code names which were recently introduced. Um, I'm sharing them with you here so we can all speak the same language. Um, the, there's two products called Mar well, yeah, Marble and Do Dolomite, which are basically SLE and Alp micro products. There's Basalt, container images. There's Slate for SAP. And there's granite, which I think is most interesting for everybody here. And like I said at the beginning, but I know people have been joining, all the names in this are yeah, code names, obviously. All the dates may change, all the names may change. Yeah, you know. So don't take anything that I'm now saying as gospel truth and you know, it's definitely happening. This is what we believe is happening right now. And if things change, we'll let you know. So Marble and Dolomite, it'll we, Marble will be Sli Micro's next major version and Dolomite will be Alp Micro. The reason for the difference is, is like I was talking about earlier, Sli Micro has really sort of captured this edge market space um, and the requirements for the edge are somewhat different than requirements in the data center. But, you know, they're similar, they're very similar in scope and product. It's just, you know, package selection will be obviously different. Features, well, the features that you've probably been seeing in the uh, in the app prototypes to date, you know, things like the confidential computing, where, you know, run the entire thing in a VM on a cloud, and yeah, you know, the host of the hypervisor can't read any anything in your memory because the memory's all encrypted. You know, things like the full disk encryption with TPM unlock, um, and really just buying into this whole concept, which all of our micro distros have always had of like self everything, right? Self self healing, self managing, self tuning, self rollback, etc. The SLE micro and Alp micro, uh, sorry, Marble and Dolomite. I really should stop using those names because those product names probably aren't going to be the product names. So Marble and Dolomite will be expected early next year, so 2024. Those will be the first commercial out products out on the market. Alongside that, obviously, there's no real point having two wonderful operating systems unless you've got stuff to run on top of them. 
So bash salt, there will be a bunch of container images, aka out BCI containers, coming at the same time. And if you're sort of plotting this out in the calendar as I go along, so that's, you know, the beginning of 2024. Um, after that, SUSE will start developing Slate, which is, you know, the SAP product. I don't really have any exciting details to share about what will be in there because we're talking about that still with everybody involved. But that is an expected, no, uh, you know, around about early calendar year 2025. And then that brings us to Granite which is the recently announced at SUSECON this last week, the SLED successor, you know, where even we're doing all this different stuff behind the scenes with ALP, you know, the goal for Granite is to still support existing SLED workloads, not containers. So, or not, not in a containerized way. So not like the micros, you know, it should look and feel like SLED, even with all of the stuff under the hood, but you know, all of that changes under the hood, you know, does, will make Granite a bit of a spiritual successor rather than potentially a, you know, a direct, clear, simple one. For example, in-place migrations, you know, that may require some really significant disruption. You know, there may be quite a bit of work to jump from a Sledge machine to a Granite machine. And things like the lifespan and release cadence may be different from Sledge because that is you know, part of the whole story without any way is, you know, tuning that up to what people actually want to use these days. One of the sort of key technologies behind the scenes with Granite is this, you know, which will be different from SLE, um, is really how we will be handling, well, the, the topic of compartmentalization. Um, all of this is subject to change. We're talking about it all the time. But really, you know, I see it as, as a, a topic that has sort of three main issues. And I'm going to pick on Python the whole time again, like I talked about at the beginning. You know, having a Python version in your SLE stack and then us having to maintain it for 13 years is a real pain. <laughs> so part one of dealing with that issue is Granite will, you know, be looking at doing things like having, you know, core language interpreters separate from yeah, for the system, separate from the one that customers and third-party packages will use it. So, you know, something like a system Python RPM that's, you know, not necessarily using user bin Python. If we are doing something like that, then, you know, customers and third-party packages will, of course, you know, still want to have something at user bin Python or whatever. Um, so those will have to be packaged differently, separate from the system ones. You know, yeah, and, you know, possibility of maybe supporting one or more versions. You know, there's a whole massive pile of questions about, okay, not just the technical issues, but like the the maintenance ones of like, okay, how many different versions do we support for how long, when, where, how, etc. And even if we do that, even if both of those concepts work out perfectly and, you know, which it probably won't without any modification from how I've painted it out there, you know, we're still not naive to think enough that it'll be perfect for everybody. Um, there's, you know, definitely third parties out there where they have really weird and wonderful requirements. Um, things like AWS CLI, where they're constantly changing well, Python again and which Python modules and blah, 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 blah. Um, so we're looking into a sort of a third tranche of that problem of like maybe having some way of bundling, you know, in an RPM some kind of tooling that maybe actually runs the binary from a container. So from a user's perspective, you type in AWS CLI and you don't actually know that magically it's going into some container and running AWS CLI from a container, um, something like that. Actually figuring out these problems and then addressing them and then actually changing factory to make all of this stuff even possible um, means, you know, Granite obviously is not going to be coming you know, as soon as any of the other ones I was just talking about, you know, we're expecting Granite to be arriving late 2025. And so, oh yeah, and so what about OpenSUSE with all of that? Well, there's multiple parts of this problem. I'll talk about, I think, the part that we all hear about in a minute. Um, but, you know, OpenSUSE will have access to 
all the ALP standard sources, apart from those obviously covered by embargoes and NDAs. And it's SUSE's intention to make sure that, you know, inside the OpenSUSE project, there's, you know, like we have with Leap Micro right now, um, but differently from, you know, how we did with Leap, um, actually having one-to-one -one matching copies of, yeah, Dolomite, so the ALP Micro product, and Granite in the OpenSUSE project. But even doing that, and this is, by the way, what I will be busy with doing and implementing, um, which is why I, I won't necessarily be yeah, too hands-on with the solution to the gap, the, the problems as I see it, you know, that, that we have doing all of that. You know, I assume we're all here because, you know, we were talking about this on the factory mailing list, you know, you want to build a, a Leap successor based on ALP, you know, and for the sake of sort of simplified assumptions, you know, I'm taking that as reading, you know, a desktop and server, lots of desktops, you know, GNOME, KDE, XFCE, etc. Lots of packages, you know, something tumbleweed sized. Looks and feels like Leap, so zipper over transactional update, you know, and as, you know, there's plenty of code names floating around and there's all this other ALP stuff. I'm just going to refer to this thing that you want to build as new Leap. Um, personally speaking, I don't think that we should actually call the thing Leap because, you know, this is going to be a new code base. It's going to be a new concept. I also kind of think it'd be best for you to really think of, you know, what do we need to build? Um, but yeah, for the sake of argument, it's, you know, it's going to try and plug the gap that, that Leap currently fills in the, the OpenSUSE ecosystem. So I'm going to keep on referring to it as New Leap for the rest of the presentation. The way I see the issue with, with all of this stuff that we've got planned on the SUSE side, you know, everything is really server orientated. There isn't a single desktop product planned at time of writing. And even, you know, in the past where SUSE had server products that like had a desktop as a key part of it, like point of sale stuff and kiosk, etc., you know, that, that isn't on the radar for any ALP product right now. So, you know, the ALP installer has a graphical stack and granite in 2025 will likely to um but you know comparing where we are today with open leap and yeah you know, where we want to probably be with new leap you know it's probably going to require more work on the graphic and desktop side building it maintaining it packaging it etc and not just for the desktop and graphical stuff like packaging in general right you know alp standard is less than 20 percent of the size of leap and tumbleweed and it's not likely to get much bigger by 2024. Um, and also, like I mentioned, you know, in-place migrations are not necessarily a priority for, for Sleep to Alp. Um, and I assume it probably will be a priority for New Leap. So we're gonna have to find people interested in looking into that issue and finding solutions for it. The other sort of big gap that I'm worried about with all of this is the one of time, right? Um, we've already arranged with SUSE that there will be a Leap 15.6. That will be coming out in mid-2024, so we have a bit more time. But Granite isn't coming out to the end of 2025. So, you know, if we wanted to build New Leap on Granite, I mean, depending on how you wanted to do it, you could wait for Granite to come out and start then, but then that doesn't, that would mean like not even starting till the end of 2025. Realistically, like the earliest I could see there being a code base and being things moving and, and being able to sort of work together in the open as, as we do, you know, that's going to start late 2024 next year. But, you know, one year is realistic for Granite for SUSE to build because, you know, it's slow sides and there's hundreds of developers at SUSE building a slow size offering. But if we're talking about something, the scope of old leap, you know, a 15,000 package code base versus the 35,000 one, you know, uh, yeah, are you realistically going to have enough contributors to package everything, test everything, build everything, as, you know, especially also with like the, you know, things being more in flux than we're used to, because, you know, this is not just new leap, it's also granite is a new thing too, you know, it's all this new stuff. So I'm worrying about the time as well as the scope. And last, 
the people. Yeah, you. I mean, the 17 people who signed up to look into this issue, there were 17 people submitting packages to Leap 15.5, um, or the 61 to backwards. So, but still, you know, that's a very small pool of people. Most of the changes for 15.5 were automated from factory and SLEE. And automation is going to be, I mean, a topic which I will be looking at the whole time as we're moving forward with all of this. But, you know, I'm not expecting the automation to be there and tested and as proven as before because all of this stuff is new. So we're going to need more eyeballs on this, more hands on on this, more packages. And, you know, we need to be sure, you know, given there is this gap of scope, right, where, you know, SUSE is focusing on their customers and more narrowly defined products, you know, Maybe, you know, I think there's a case to be made that, that OpenSUSE is going to find more packages and maintainers for its products that, you know, don't necessarily overlap with the SUSE ones. So I have some ideas on, on how you might want to address these issues. One option for, you know, the scope issue is maybe new Leap doesn't have to be as big and as broad as Leap. Um, I was already talking to Simon Lees, who isn't here because, well, I don't think he's here. He's probably asleep. Um, you know, who did his uh, grassy knoll experiments early on. You know, he that's kind of what he embraced with his idea, right? You know, having a leap replacement that is much narrower in definition than old leap. You know, maybe having it something like a desktop only operating system, maybe only including the most popular desktops or maybe at least the desktops that have the most contributors you know so it's actually sustainable for the years that we need to do i really think it's important that you sort of ask yourselves what do you need to do versus what do you want you know we would want to you know to have this huge massive replace perfect replacement for for leap but i think we can probably get away with doing something much less without upsetting too many people and yeah the big sort of migration question, how do you want to address migrations? You know, it's, you know, in OpenSUSE, we're used to just doing a zip it up and being done with it. Um, in SUSE land, speaking to more and more customers, they don't like doing that. They much prefer just installing fresh. How do we want to do that in the new Leap world? Uh, next, time warp, time. How are we gonna deal with that? Um, you know, we got Leap 15.6 on the radar and we got it there so we could have more time to have these conversations. And it's great if you actually want to get ahead of all of this and build stuff based on out like right now, um, which is definitely an option. I mean, there's no reason why New Leap has to wait for Granite or anything. I mean, if you want to get going, let's you know, go. Um, but, you know, if you do want to wait for Granite and have, you know, have an alignment with that, you know, that really means waiting until at least the late 2024 to get started and then nothing coming out to 2025. Um, if you want to have a, a leap 15.7 more time, you know, please let me know. I can have those conversations internally. We can see the possibility of making that just, you know, so we don't leave our community high and dry, obviously. Um, but even if we do opt for more time, I don't think this is a problem. We should just sort of kick the can down the road and, you know, waste uh, waste a year twiddling our thumbs really like you know there's there's a whole bunch of issues probably far more than i've already highlighted in this presentation that all of this brings up and things we need to think about things we can improve on you know let's tackle what we can in whatever time we can make for ourselves and yeah last but no means least people power you know is 17 people the people who signed up so far, you know, really big enough to tackle this problem. Um, I don't think it is. You know, I think you need to get more people involved in this. I think we need to find a way of, of keeping them involved for years and actually thinking about how to keep this project sustainable. Um, you know, Tumbleweed, you know, it isn't necessarily a model that can copy and, and help us here, but it, it's got that sort of lovely, compelling loop of because it's always moving, it always needs work, you know, contributors can always dive in, they see an impact really, really quickly. And because they see that impact really, really quickly, you know, then, you know, there's, you know, you can easily pull in more users, etc., more contributors, rinse, repeat, etc. Um, you know, I, th yeah, 
I think one of the reasons we have such an issue of getting contributors to, to Old Leap is, you know, that, that bridge isn't there. So, you know, someone wants something, they, they got to wait a year for it. Um, and yeah, you know, and then by then, you know, are they even still using that thing in a year because they've been waiting for a year for it? You know, maybe they've moved to Tumbleweed, maybe they've moved to a different distribution. Um, so yeah, I, th I think, you know, with Alp being so adaptable, um, you know, I think there's potential scope for maybe some really sort of innovative options here. You know, maybe, you know, yeah, maybe there ends up being another code stream just for community stuff, something in between Tumbleweed Speed and, yeah, Alp Standard. And maybe that's always open and maybe this new leap is like some kind of slower paced rolling release. Um, and maybe that's how we keep our contributors around. Because, I mean, just looking at the numbers, I've really, I've been worried about Leap for a long time before this app stuff comes, came around and it's made it even more stark now. I mean, it's a very small amount of contributors making not a huge amount of changes. And yeah, Tumbleweed has, you know, yeah, hundreds, if not, I think it's over a thousand more contributors now. Um, you know, so yeah, when it's 1,060 versus 60, like that, that's a, that's a crazy number for a year, right? Um, and when the amount of change in a week in Tumbleweed is equivalent to the amount of change in, in Leap in a year, like that's, that's weird and wonderful too. Like, so like we really need to find a way of addressing that for this. So my final thoughts before I open up for the Q and A and I'm right on time is, you know, I'm actually really excited about Alp. I think this is like, all this stuff is really, really cool, both from the business side and like, I'm really looking forward to getting those one-to-one -one copies and OpenSUSE and factory building in this way, etc. cetera. Um, I think everything we've got going with Tumbleweed and Eon and Granite and Dolomite is, yeah, great for rolling users and server users. Um, and yeah, I have, huge faith in this team for being able to come up with a solution that's just as good for all the leap users which you know i admit we don't have all the answers for yet that's why we're here and with that i'm now going to stop the recording and hopefully the crazy spinning fan noise that's driving me nuts here